Right now, the Senate is voting on the third of three amendments offered by Republicans to address the religious liberty issues that arise from this uh, disrespect for marriage act. And then there will be a vote on uh, the actual bill itself. Now, what's very interesting about this is that uh, all three of these amendments right now, it's a Rubio amendment. Prior to this was Lankford amendment. And then there was the Mike Lee amendment. Um, Republicans voted for the amendments, but not the Democrats, not a single Democrat voted for that I'm aware of. Now, I could be mistaken, but as I was watching, having to come into the studio, um, I was watching pretty much to the end of the Langford Amendment, and, and not a single Democrat voted. It's amazing how the Democrats stick together to advance their agenda, but the Republicans, uh, 12 Republicans, breaking off to join the Democrats in this attack on religious freedom. Now, it's been seven years since the Supreme Court's decision to redefine marriage, and we've already seen the damage inflicted by this decision. Look, what's happening in classrooms where children are being indoctrinated with this radical sexual ideology, you cannot sever that from this redefinition of marriage and human sexuality. Look, I, I cannot be more clear. The Disrespect for Marriage Act, which codifies the Supreme Court decision into federal law, is an absolute danger to our most fundamental freedoms as Americans, the ability to live out our faith in our public lives, and that includes parents being able to teach their children values that are consistent with biblical truth. Uh, I've had multiple conversations with, uh, with senators and others on the Hill, and uh, I could, could not be more, um, let, me, let me choose my words carefully here, um, I, I cannot believe that we have leaders that do not understand the threat that this poses to religious freedom in this country. Uh, I am extremely disappointed in some of these uh, men and women who are advancing this attack. Well, there are some who get it and understand it and have been fighting it. And one of those is joining me now, Congressman Jody Heiss. He serves on the House Committee on Oversight and Reform, the House Committee on Natural Resources. He represents Georgia's 10th Congressional District. Congressman Heiss, welcome back to the program. Tony, thanks for having me. Literally just getting off a plane and catching up on the latest on this disrespect act that is absolutely horrifying what we're watching right now. I mean, you see it. You see the threat. I mean, this is not uh, theoretical. We've seen this over the last seven years. Why is it that we have some leaders, you know, on Capitol Hill that just do not connect the dots? It is stunning to me to try to connect those dots. And I, I absolutely cannot fathom. I cannot understand what is going through the minds of these individuals who think that it's okay to shred our First Amendment, our constitutionally protected religious liberties, and open the floodgate. I mean, uh, realistically, Tony, this could be the beginning of the end of religious liberties in America. And unfortunately, it is happening on the shoulders of Republicans who are allowing this to take place. And as you mentioned, they, in fact, will vote for the final passage of this horrendous bill. It right. is thinkable to me. Uh, and in my opinion, none of these individuals should continue serving in the Senate. Well, they certainly shouldn't uh, serve with our support. Uh, and I can, I can tell you right now that uh, anyone who supports this measure, knowing now what they know, that this is an attack on religious freedom, they will not enjoy the support of the Family Research Council uh, action, our action arm, nor myself in the, uh, the, the days, years ahead. That said, uh, Congressman Heiss, this goes back over to the House, where in August, or in June, actually, uh, there were 47 Republicans who voted for this. Now, some of them have since retreated from that, understanding the threat that this poses. But the House is going to have another shot at this. What happens next time? Yeah, you know, I think the uh, obviously, as you mentioned, the, de the Democrats stick together. So I fully anticipate the entire Democratic conference will stick together and support this. And therefore, it only will take a handful of Republicans to support it and it will pass the House. I, I don't look for anywhere near 47 Republicans to support it this time, but more than likely there will be enough to join forces with the Democrats to see this pass in the House of Representatives as well. 
Uh, and yeah, you're you're exactly right. Many of those who voted before uh, didn't fully grasp the the horrific measures that are in this bill, and they understand it now. So again, there won't be 47 Republicans support it, but I uh, just knowing what I know of the makeup of our Republican conference, I would anticipate there's going to be enough to pass this. Uh, Jody, let me ask you this, because you, you've been at this for a while, as I have, and, you know, this is discouraging to a lot of people who have supported men and women for office who only end up being disappointed when they do uh, offer support for measures like this. I mean, you, you've made this very clear before we've talked about this is a spiritual crisis. Uh, we're facing s spiritual problems that cannot be solved by legislation. The days are difficult, and they're going to get more difficult ahead. How should we as Christians be responding? Listen, I, that's a great question, Tony, and something that you're, you're exactly right. I mean, this is so right down my, my burden and my heart's cry. Uh, we cannot fix the problems that America is facing with another piece of legislation or throwing another trillion dollars at it. It is spiritual in nature, which requires the body of Christ stand up and engage our culture and our political structure head to head, eye to eye. And that begins in prayer. It, begin, it, it continues at the ballot box. It continues with many actually stepping up to the plate to run for office, be it locally, federally, or statewide, whatever it may be. It involves phone calls, letter writing, rallies. It takes being engaged. And by definition, it is impossible to be salt and light without being engaged. And yet we yeah. are called to be salt and light. And so this is the hour for the body of Christ to have her finest hour to step up to the plate and be counted. Yeah, it's not time to uh, hang it up and go home. It is time to, uh, to stay faithful to our call to be salt and light. Uh, Jody, hi, it's always great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. Great to be with you.